Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the next part in my collection and declutter series. Let's get into it. This is actually the last of my Oracle deck collection from among the decks that hang on the wall. We will have more because I have a shelf still to go through at some point that has mixed, I think mostly Oracle decks or affirmation decks, things like that. But this is the last of my hanging Oracle decks. Let's start off with a deck you can't really find anymore and that I can't imagine ever leaving my collection. This is the Buddha Doodles deck of cards. I don't know, this is by artist Molecules. I don't know if she ever plans to put these out again in any form or a different version of them, but they are lovely. I absolutely adore them. And I've had them for many years. I had them available at my yoga studio when I ran a studio. They're affirmation tile cards, style cards. They're giant, they're huge. Here's my hand, they're huge. They're really great for just putting in a card stand and setting out. Like, ever since happiness heard your name, it has been running through the streets trying to find you. Love that. Smell the air, imagine the flowers that follow. Nurture the garden of loving kindness. It's just lovely. It's very calming to look at. I love Molecule's artwork. Love the little Buddha series. This was a series of Facebook posts back in the day that Molecule's used to do. And she just turned them into a deck. And they're so lovely. I don't pull this very often, but it's something that I treasure. I'm so glad that I have. And it's just really, really nice. And actually, I just realized this actually would get so much more use if I pulled this into my bed, by the bed deck collection. So I think that's where this is gonna go. Yeah, it's perfect for that. So that's where that's gonna go. Hmm, so lovely, Buddha Doodles cards. Huge, lovely, love it. This deck and I go way back. This was one of the first Peggy bags ever made one of the early ones, and I had put these wooden beads on it. I just, I love the vibe. This is the Enchanted Map. Me and this deck, we have such a story. So I had this deck just like this, and then I trimmed it down and ended up, I don't know, not really using it much anymore, and then I rehomed my trimmed copy. And then it came out in a new version with these like blue backs and blue titles, and I didn't like it as much. And I thought I did. So I had, I had upgraded to that version. And then I really missed this one. So when I saw this available secondhand, I, I got it back again. There's just something really lovely about this deck that takes me back. And I really love the messages in the guidebook. They're very healing. There's a lot of really powerful stuff here. This is very much a deck that I use for myself. I do think it's not something that I really reach for much anymore. But I want to say this was one of the first decks that Colette Baron Reed and Jenna De La Grotaglia did together. Yeah, because you can't even find Jenna De La Grotaglia's. There she is in the back of the book, but there's no reference to her anywhere else. This was when Tar or Tarot and Oracle card publishers were still doing that, where they weren't putting the artist's name on the outside of the box of the book, which, you know, we've learned. We, we do better now most of the time. I love this listening card so much. This is another one. Maybe I'm just having a, a moment with bedtime decks, but I feel like this would be a really good one for by the bed because I don't really pair it with anything. Mind you, this would pair also pair pretty well with the Tarot of Mystical Moments. Mm, ish. Let's just look up Field of Dreams and see if the guidebook still hits the way that it once did. Let's see. 21. Field of dreams. Your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs are always engaging the vast field of pure potential. This is the perfect time to harness the field of vast potential not yet realized in your life. Great abundance is yours if you're willing to do the work alongside the gentle gardener. Be clear about your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Concentrate on your best life regardless of the temporary outer conditions imposed upon you by the greater world which has its own story to tell. You have a basket full of seeds that are quite powerful, for your talents are divinely inspired and will indeed lead to a great harvest to be shared with others. You will reap what you have sown, dream big dreams, dream big, dream beautiful, take action, and tend to the garden of your life and experience the extraordinary. This is falling totally flat right now. <laughs> um, I don't know. Am I, have I grown out of this deck? 
slow and steady. Let's look at that one. Remember the old cliche, slow and steady wins the race. This is a time for easy movement on hurried steps. Okay, yeah, yeah. Magical map shifter. Am I over this deck? Is that what's happened? Because <laughs> I'm like looking at this, I'm like, this is like, bleh. Let's see. When the magical map shifter card arrives, it comes to the mission to make you aware of the people who come into your life to impact your personal growth. Perhaps you may need a soulmate. This feels very... This is giving me a vibe that is not what I remember. And I think it's because there was one card in here called the Bone Collector, which I really loved. But I'm looking at this now and I'm like, you know what? This is not, this is not me anymore. I think there was a period of time in which this was me and it felt really good. And now I'm looking at this going, this reads cheesy in a way that I'm not loving at all. But there was a point when this was exactly what I needed. I'm gonna purgatory this actually. I didn't think I was gonna do that but it's been in this bag for forever. I literally have this bag and this deck sort of married in my mind. I'm gonna purgatory this. I'm gonna purgatory this. This bag isn't going, I, I save my bag so that I, and I usually do repurpose them eventually. This would, I could think of things, this would hold nicely. All right, we're gonna move on because I don't know why, but I'm, wow, that was unexpected. Okay, next we have the Constellation deck, the Compendium of Constellations. I got, I got this on sale and I love that I got this on sale because I've been like wanting it for a really long time. But it's one of those decks that felt indulgent to me because I'm like, what am I going to actually use this for? But I do love the colors and the little constellations. It's another Claire Goodchild deck. Here's the thing. I think this is cool. There's no guidebook. It's really just pretty colors, pretty constellations with keywords. But I have no attachment to this constel these constellations other than that I'm pretty sure Monoceros, which is the unicorn constellation, is in here. <laughs> it was This was a cool concept. It's simple. It's pretty. It pairs well with things. But I'm looking at this now and I'm like, hmm, I think I'm going to... I think this is just, it's fun and it's unique. But it's because I love keywords that I'm like kind of drooling about this. But I don't think, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> it's funny. It was one of those decks. Like I just saw it on Etsy one day and it was just like, and look at the, how much of my decisions to keep decks is because I've just got perfect bag matches for them. Do you know what I mean? This would actually be perfect for the, would this be perfect for the rainbow tarot? No, the rainbow tarot has a perfect bag. I don't know. I will find a use for the bag. I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to purgatory this. There is a chance that I might just keep it. It's kind of a fun collectible. I may just keep it and store it, but I'm going to purgatory it and see if I miss it or if later when I go through my purgatory decks, I actually want to revisit it. All right, we're being ruthless now. This one's safe. This is the goddess deck by Hrana Janto and Sofia Marashinsky. I've talked about this deck for years and years. I love it. It's beautiful. I don't need many goddess decks. And in fact, I only have a couple because this one just is the one that I measure all the other ones against. Part of me would really like to trim this down though. I would really love to trim down all of the white borders and then trim off the top and the sides. Well, trim off all the white border, not all the white borders, trim off all the white borders off the back and then trim the tops all the way down to the artwork and the sides all the way down to the artwork and then just trim up enough at the bottom that the white is gone. That's a modification I would love to do, but I haven't trimmed a deck in a very long time. And this one is just, I love this artwork so much. I don't pair this. This is something I use when I want to work with goddess energy and it's very specific in its purpose for me, but I love it. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's a classic. I don't see myself ever letting it go. It's just a special deck and I like it. Okay, next up we have the Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud. Also a classic, also not going anywhere. This one's very safe. I do have a couple reversals mixed in, but I do often end up shuffling reversals into this deck when I'm using it because the guidebook, which is just magical, does have meanings that differ based on whether you pulled the fairy in reverse or upright. And I like the nuance that it offers. It looks like I did a poor job of putting in reversals because there's only a few or I fixed them and just missed some. 
Yeah, that looks better. Anyways, this has, is fairy as I expect fairy is, if that makes sense. It's a mix and Brian Froud feels very in touch with the fairy realm. So I have no doubt that there's legitimacy here. I struggle sometimes with the titles being difficult to read. The fact that this is still in print, it's in, it's in print for a reason. And the guidebook that comes with it is absolutely astounding. It's so good. And I edged my cards in a color to match. Just kind of a golden color. Yeah, love this. This is safe. Some of these are decks that I've just had for a long time and are used for very specific purposes. Okay, next up is the Earth Wisdom. Look at that match, it's incredible. I actually got this recently and I haven't really had a chance to use it a ton, but it does pair beautifully. This is by Barbara Moore with artwork by Christina Scagliotti. This Oracle does pair really well with the As Above So Below decks by Barbara Moore. And I love, love pairing them with those. And in fact, I should probably hang them together. Let me just go grab them just so we can double check that I'm not completely crazy. So the As Above So Below, let's just clear some space here. There is the So Below and there is the As Above. No, I think I am crazy. I don't think this pairs, at first glance, this actually does not pair well. I feel like I need to pair this with something though because I think it does go Oh, you know what might be, okay, let me try this again here. Let's think. Oh, I know what this might pair really beautifully with. Okay, let me put my as above, so below away. This is the Tarot of a Witch's Garden. And I feel like this is actually a really lovely match. Oh, I like this a lot. Oh, I like these together a lot. These are gonna hang together. And look at the backs. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Hold on, I'll, I'll show you in a second here. Look at the backs together. Oh, put them back in upside down. Look at that. How perfect is that? So I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang these together. And that's something I'm starting to do. I used to keep only my oracles in one spot, my tarot in another, and I'm starting to hang them in pairs and that's making such a difference with how often I'm wanting to reach for certain things. So this, this is such a disorganized collection video, but that's that's how we're rolling. So these are gonna be together. So you might see some of these show up again because I'm gonna hang them on the rack with the other deck. So if I haven't covered it yet, it's gonna, you're gonna see it again, it's fine. So we're gonna hang those together. Okay, let's talk about the surrender cards because these are good, they are good. They need a better bag. Let's just look at the backs here for a second. We have this beautiful sunset. Maybe I should put them in this bag. But am I gonna remember what's in it? No, it's tied to that, it just is what it is. Um, this literally just says like once, what does this say? Can I read it? I cannot read it. Shine bright, I don't know. It's a, it's a cheesy bag for a cheesy deck. Here's the thing. This is not a beautiful deck, but it's really powerful for healing. And this I think should live with my shadowy and healing decks. Surrender your fear of change, surrender, receive, support, love. Actually, this is also a deck that makes a wonderful bedtime deck. So maybe it's gonna go back over with my bedtime decks, which is a rapidly growing collection. There's just certain decks that are just really good for just myself or for healing or for soothing. And this is definitely one of them. So that's safe. But what about the fairy tale? Oracle. I love this deck. I don't use it very often. This is Lucy Cavendish. So this deck actually does work well. Did I already put it away? With the Tarot of the Enchanted Forest? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> what does this even go with? And the thing is, I don't necessarily use this by itself. Is the thing. Okay, here's the story with this deck. I picked this deck up, Lucy Cavendish, and I picked up this book by Lucy Cavendish, illustrated by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And these obviously share the same artwork, the same fairy tales. It's not a 100% matchup, but you'll find the Hansel and Gretel card will be in here. I do really like this. I think the, the book was such a joy to read. 
the book was such a joy to read. I don't know if I need, I do like this Oracle deck though. It's just, let me grab the, let me grab the book. I'm having a hard time deciding. So let's just look at the Nixie of Mill Pond here which is card 41. Yeah, it's got the little snippet of the story. It's got some meanings. I do really like this. I think this needs to be another bedtime deck, though, maybe, with the guidebook. So why don't I, I'm just, not me, I just need to work with some of these and like, like by themselves, because I think that's kind of where they're sort of fitting for me. Um, I'm gonna put this in the bedtime collection and see, if pulling a card, I don't know, y'all. I am like on the fence. And it could be because I've been filming for a bit and I, I'm getting a little bit tired, but I just wonder. Yeah, here's the Hansel and Gretel card, Survival and Ingenuity. I love fairy tales so much. I do. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna think about it because I don't know. I don't know. Is this one that I'd bother with for bedtime? Probably not. Probably not, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm agonizing. Okay, let's move on for a minute and then we'll see if I can come back to it. All right, let's talk about the Alice, though. This one is amazing. This is the Alice the Wonderland Oracle, also by Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And frankly, this is the my favorite. I love this. I love this deck so much. Now, I'm a big fan of Alice. I'm a big fan of this matte laminated cardstock as well. It might be that because I love this, I want to love the fairy tale oracle, but I do love the fairy tale oracle. Okay, let me just let me just let me just focus. This one's safe. I love all the Alice illustrations. I love the guidebook. The guidebook's really good. And I have a great time when I work with this. I do often pair this with an Alice tarot, of which I now have two. So I have the Alice, I have the tarot of, tarot in Wonderland, I think it's called, or the Alice in Tarot Land. It might be Alice in Tarot Land. I don't know, the one by Bar Barbara Moore, which is incredible. And this one go really good together. And then this also pairs well, I think, with the Baba Studios Alex. A Alice, not Alex. This also pairs well with the Baba Studios Alice Tarot, and I really love it, so it's safe for sure. Okay. Next up is the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. This is a cool deck. I have really enjoyed re reaching for this for astrology purposes, like reading about these energies this deck bores me, if I'm being completely honest. It's cool. It reads well. It bores me. It bores me. It's boring. It's just not a deck that inspires me to reach for it. And I have held on to it for a very long time because it was out of print for a very long time. But there are then sometimes times when this is the only deck that makes sense to grab. Usually astrology reasons are why. Um... And I struggle with that. I don't think I should get rid of this yet. I don't think I should purgatory this yet. It is really cool to have a planet in a sign energy and to be able to look that up and think about what that means. But maybe this, maybe my time with this is just kind of done. It might be. Okay, grab the book. This deck bores me. I'm bored of this deck. I think this needs to go into purgatory. And I don't think I'm going to miss it, is the thing. Okay. We're making decisions. This is not going anywhere. This is a unicorn oracle. I love this. This is also one that I repurchased. I have had this oracle deck in two different versions. I had it in the glossy version when it first came out. Well, when I first encountered it. I don't know if it was when it first came out. It's a collaborative art deck, but it's beautiful. It's all the unicorns. I repurchased it in this beautiful matte cardstock because I love it. This is one of those cheesy Oracle decks that I love and will always enjoy using. And it's kind of a funny thing. It's like decks like this that make me realize why I don't need decks like this. Cause like I've got my cheesy, fun, beautiful deck. I love it. Speaking of unicorns, did you know? I'm sure you did because I can't shut up about it. But just in case you didn't know, <laughs> this is a great time to talk about my unicorn deck. Not only because I think it would actually pair really nicely with this unicorn. I think this is literally just called the Unicorn Oracle. But my deck is currently, or at the time I'm filming this, is currently funding on Kickstarter. 
Oh, I kind of like this pairing actually. I wasn't, I haven't really tried to pair it with this. Anyways, if you're interested in information about my unicorn's journey tarot, you can definitely find that in the description box down below. The Kickstarter runs from April 20th to May 17th. So depending on when you see this video, the Kickstarter may be over, but if it's over, don't worry because we fund it in like three minutes. Um, we hit a bunch of stretch goals. By the time I'm filming this, we'd already hit almost all of them. So who knows where we're at by the time you're seeing this video. But here's the thing. This deck is happening. So if you missed the Kickstarter, don't worry. There will be an opportunity to pre-order. It won't be at the Kickstarter exclusive price. But if you click the link down below, you'll get information on how to be notified when pre-orders open up or to pre-order if it's already open. Because again, I'm filming like we're time traveling. <laughs> I actually really like this together. I think I would actually use these together, which is great. But yes, Unicorn's Journey Tarot is my deck. It's a narrative deck. It's all about a little unicorn named Mystic who discovers who they really are, finds family, taps into their creative potential, meets unicorns from all different elemental realms in a magical land. It's amazing. It's one of my bonus cards that we unlocked with a stretch goal. It's amazing. I'm so proud of this deck and how it came out and all it has to offer. And I'm trying to get better at being comfortable talking about my own stuff. So that is the Unicorn's Journey Tarot. Keep an eye out. Information in the description box down below. All right. Let me put the Unicorn Oracle away because, again, we're definitely safe. This is another one that's definitely safe. I've had this forever, it feels like. This is the Tao Oracle. It is an I Ching-based Oracle deck by Ma Deva Padma, the creator of the Osho Zen Tarot. And I love this. I don't use it a ton, but it's a very balanced oracle because it's based on the I Ching. And I do even keep a set of three little pennies, just Canadian pennies in this bag with the deck so that I can cast if I want to along with it. Um, but I've had this for ages. It reads really well. The artwork is beautiful. The cardstock is lovely and I love it. So that is the Tao Oracle, big fan, definitely safe. Next up, we have a two deck combo and I might just be letting these go. These are cool. This is the Paulo Barbieri Unicorns Oracle and the Paulo Barbieri Star Dragons. Oh no, I'm gonna keep these. What am I saying? Okay, here's the thing. This is kind of like a Peggy and me reading combo that I created. So I keep them together in this bag. The idea is that I can pull like sort of a unicorn and a dragon energy together and sort of get an alchemy, alchemy, alchemized, is that the word I'm looking for, reading. The interesting thing about the Paulo Barbieri unicorns is that they are, they're really wild, obviously. These, the tones of these decks do match. I have shuffled them together on occasion, but I like being able to pull a unicorn and a dragon separately. I'm not entirely sure they're in the right bag for what they are though. I am tempted to put them into something different, but I'm not sure what that would be. So for now, they're gonna live in this embroidered labyrinth bag, but the neat thing about the unicorns here, it says not a Yeti, not a constellation. And when I first saw that, that really annoyed me. I was like, what the heck? But then I realized the reason that it's not a deer is because it's a unicorn and it's showing up as a unicorn guide, right? And so the dragons and the unicorns both here show up as I feel like in a very guide-like energy. And I think because of that, these have a unique vibe in my collection. I have a feeling that when Peggy's Sassy Dragon Tarot comes out, that I might just use Unicorn's Journey Tarot, my tarot, with Peggy's Sassy Dragons for this unicorn dragon energy. But for now, I really do like pulling these for that combined unicorn dragon energy. So I think, I think these are gonna stay. I don't know why, I was just, it's just, it's not something I'm using a lot right now, but it's the kind of thing that I'm really happy I have and because the artwork is cohesive across both decks and does the job I need it to do, it's kind of it's kind of perfect for that. So we're gonna keep these together. I just separate them by their guidebooks like that and just keep them in the same big bag, standard bag. And so those are staying. This deck, I'm hoping to use more. <laughs> I don't think I can bring myself to get rid of it, even though I've had it forever and I just don't use it often. But I really want to pair this with one of the Arthurian tarots that I have, and I do really like this deck. It's it's very special and pretty, and I just like it. I'm glad I have it. It is based on the Arthurian legends, but it also has a sort of just general Celtic 
Celtic vibe, and I really like it. Now, I'm currently listening to The Mist of Avalon on audiobook, and it, I've been listening for forever because it's so long, and I have so little time to listen to audiobooks, but I do really like this. I do really like this. I just don't use it very often. It's seen very little use. It feels very specific. But I have a couple of Arthurian decks that I plan to do some study of, so I feel like for that reason, this really has a solid space in my collection. And this was a Rock Pool publishing deck, and I think they did a really nice job on the quality of this. Okay, so it's time for me to reckon with what I have left here because actually I pared this section down quite a bit between just moving things and sort of just, yeah. Okay, so going into Purgatory, I have Oracle of the Radiant Sun and the Compendium of Constellations and the Enchanted Map. Fairy Tale, Fairy Tale, Fairy Tale Oracle. I think I'm going to keep this. It's not something I reach for a lot, but the decks that I've been looking at in general in this category aren't decks I reach for a ton. And I'm okay with that. And I love, I don't know, I just love having a fairy tale themed oracle deck. And I do really like Lucy Cavendish's guidebooks quite a bit. So I, and it's a nice chunky one. So I think I do really enjoy this and want to continue to work with it. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to have to put the book back away. But that is that. So Purgatory and everything else that I have not already put in my bedtime deck area, that's what we have here. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for helping me figure out what to do because bouncing this off, kind of verbally processing is so helpful. So thank you so, so much. As always, an extra, extra big thank you goes out to my Unicorn Fam channel members. Thank y'all so much for everything you do. I appreciate you. Until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.